Good morning guys, good morning internet, YouTube, hi, hello, how are you guys doing? This is ZJ, back once again with another narrated time-lapse video of one of my artworks. Uh, this time we're taking a look at a master study that I did of Joseph Tapiro. Um, so let's talk about the artist, <laughs> Mr. Tapiro. Um, I don't know much about him, I couldn't find a whole lot of information about him. All I know is that he is an Orientalist painter uh, and he lived around the 1800s which around that time um, the most popular form of art is academic art or what they would say the French classical um, kind of art. Um, the Academy of Arts in France is pretty much the uh, main authority in anything art. Um, the Impressionists was going on around that period too, but obviously they were kind of like an offshoot. They were just beginning. They were totally new genres. They weren't very well accepted yet, especially in the early 1800s. Um, but yeah, um, the Impressionists was around that time period too, as well as the post-Impressionists. But Joseph Tapiro, um, looking at his style, which is on the left right now, that's his painting on the left. If you take a look at his... Uh, painting it is very very immensely realistic and it's easy to tell that just by looking at it that it's going to be one of those academic art paintings or those paintings that's pretty much influenced by the French Academy of Arts um, so in, in a way um, this is what attracted me to the painting uh, I absolutely love the fact that it looked like a photograph. <laughs> I mean, you take a look at that painting and it's kind of hard to discern whether it's a photograph or it's a painting, but it's actually a painting. I, I love the way he did those clothes. The, the clothes in the guy, um, I mean, it, it's just amazing, intense detail. And you can tell that just by looking at this photo that he spent a good deal of time um, painting this piece. And so, this is part of the reason why I chose this to do my study on. Um, because it's just amazing. I mean, it's just an amazing photo. So yeah. Um, I got the photo when I was part of uh, conceptart.org. Conceptart.org was around. It has a forum for master studies. It's basically a bunch of paintings by old uh, painters. Uh, a lot of them are from the classical era, obviously. The golden age of painting, I guess you could say. Um, and basically, you know, someone would post like a painting from one of these artists and you take the time to go study from it. And I picked Joseph Tapiro just because of the reasons I mentioned. And his artwork is immensely realistic, um, which is what I like. Um... So yeah, <laughs> um, let me talk about the process. I, I forgot to mention about what's been going on in the video so far. So far, what I did was I took a copy of his painting and I blurred it out. Um, and I basically just wanted to start with some form of color in the canvas, not just a blank white canvas. And that's part of the reason why I did that took the old photo, blurred it, and kind of took some colors from that photo to, to kind of mark out the general shape of the character. Then I took a, a regular old pen, basic circle brush uh, to kind of uh, just do a quick sketch essentially of where things are going to be. Um, and then now I'm kind of just laying out blocks of color. So. Um, I'm going to go take it the time to talk about studying and what is the whole point of, of me doing this, essentially. Um, Anthony Jones um, mentioned, um, or he has a video out on YouTube talking about studies and the proper way to do studies. And according to him, you know, when you do your studies, um, well, even before I mention that, let me just go ahead and backtrack for a minute and talk real quick about what a study is. Um, because some people get confused about what studies are. You know, I mean, they look at 
uh, painting like this and they just think it's mindless copying of sorts but it's really not it's a lot more involved than that um, basically a study is you know you take an old piece of artwork you take a look at it and you know you basically you know study what is the most important aspects of that artwork and then you try to recreate the most important aspects or what you think are the most important aspects of that artwork or things that you like about that artwork you know you just try to recreate it um so basically when anthony jones have that video about studying he basically stated that when you you go do a study you pick a particular painting and you study it because there's something about that painting that you're not good at so if you're not good at composition then you know you pick a painting by the hudson river artist um or the hudson river school artist you know so that you could study landscapes and the way to compose figures and in landscapes and whatnot or if you're weak at portrait paintings and you take a look at Christian Sabold, for example, and study how he paints his portraits, you know, um, so basically that's what a study is. You know, if you're particularly weak at something in your art form or, or in your artwork, um, you look at someone that's very good at it and you study their work and then you try to recreate it by copying the work. So that's essentially what a study is. Now, Anthony Jones mentioned, mentioned something about mindless copying and how he feels that some, a lot of artists do mindless copying. Um, although at the end of the video, he did mention something about, you know, after you've done enough studies or you've gotten good at your craft, there, are, there comes a point in time where mindless copying is okay. But as a general rule, he kind of disregards it and doesn't really think that it's the best way to practice um, when practicing art. Me, on the other hand, I totally approach studies in a totally different way. Sort of. Um, when I grab paintings from other artists and then I said about, you know, kind of like copying them um in a way even though i don't really have a goal in mind like oh i want to study composition when i do this or i want to study color when i when i'm doing this study what i typically am more focused on in a study is training my eye to look and it, it kind of sounds so <laughs> weird when I say it you know it's kind of confusing but to define it further it's basically like this when people start out drawing first and when people start doing artwork they have a tendency to draw based on what they think something looks like you know um and that's the reason why a lot of artists has a tendency to get stuck on their artwork because they never ever look at references they never ever look at something you know, they're just like, oh, well, I know it looks like this, so I'm going to draw it like this kind of deal. And they're, they heavily depend on memory. Um, studying, on the other hand, forces you to not think so much about what something looks like. Instead, look at something and try to recreate it, you know. So it's kind of like training your eye to just like really look and not think so much in a way. A good example of this particular painting is is the nose on the character on the left. If you take a look at his nose, um, there's some highlights, unusual highlights on his nose at the very top near his eye. Typically when I paint my noses, like that highlight never ever typically happens to be there. You know, but for some odd reason, it is there in his painting, in in this guy. And it's probably just because there's some oil in that area that makes, you know, the character, sh that the nose of the character shiny, you know. And that's probably the reason why there's like a little shiny spot in that area. But typically in any given moment or in any given time, most of the time, there's never ever a highlight there. And that's what I mean about, that's what I mean about 
painting something and like really looking at something you know because if i had just gone with what i know i would not have painted that highlight there in the first place like right now you see me painting i haven't put the highlights in eventually i will put the highlights in um but you will see in my in my study that i struggled i struggled with putting that highlight on the top area that nose because it's typically not there it's never ever there um but I know that it's in the painting and it looks natural in the painting. So I know that, you know, when the artist did his own studies, he, he noticed that and he painted that in because he knows that it is natural and that it happens sometimes. Not all the time, but it does happen, you know, and so that's why he put it in there. And so if if I hadn't like noticed that and paid attention to that, and if I had just been like mindlessly, really mindlessly copying I would not have put that highlight in there you know and i think this is the reason why it's important to do studies every now and then is because you know if you do studies right just kind of like what anthony jones was saying if you do your studies right um it will help you become a better artist you know it will help you not depend so much on your memory but instead really depend on your eye you know like really train the eye to just really look and see you know what's going on and see there's the highlight there's me putting in the highlights right now and i could tell you right now like it felt weird for me when i was putting it in when i was doing it and now that i'm looking back at it it still looks weird to me like the highlights in the forehead on the cheeks and then the bottom part of the nose and then the top of the mouth area all of those highlights i typically paint those in when when i'm painting because i know they're typically there but that that top area that knows it's just it looks funky to me but i know that i have to put that in there because it was in the painting you know and i kind of just have to make it look natural in my painting so eventually i kind of did you know i mean it looks natural it, it's not like super off or anything um i i didn't do it as successfully as joseph tapiro did obviously um so yeah i it, in my defense, I did do a speed paint on this. Yeah, I didn't spend a whole lot of time. So yeah, if I had spent a whole lot of time, I, I might have nailed that look. Um, but I didn't. But anyways, I, I, well, the other thing that I was going to mention was that I, I learned the importance of really looking at something in my figure drawing class with Mr. Ed Blackburn back at University of North Texas. It, it was probably the most important thing I learned in college when when I went to that particular school. Um, because when I started that figure drawing class, I my characters has a tendency to be cartoony. They have the tendency to be more anime. You know, I had anime proportions. I kind of had, well, not so much as anime, more comic book. You know, more like Marvel, DC, comic bookish. You know, that that was the kind of look that I was doing in in my figure drawing class. You know, and I remember one time when I was like working on this girl, and she was like sitting down or whatnot. That, that was what her pose was. I remember Miss Professor Blackburn just coming in, and he was just, you know, kind of just took over, drew on my stuff, and said, "You really have to look." at wait at what's going on you know and he basically just started sketching over my stuff you know which i wasn't used to it before you know that's never you know that's never happened to me before i was like whoa you know someone's drawing over my stuff it's kind of weird you know but then i got over it obviously you know but when he was doing it he started working on an area that i was having problems with like I remember just like drawing that area like back and forth and I think it had something to do with her arm or her leg. I don't remember what area it was that I had issues with with the figure. But I kept going back and forth in that area and I just could not nail it right. And then he just came over and he started sketching and he was just like, you really had to look at the character or you, not the character. You had to really look at the model in front of you, you know, and he kept pointing it out to me. You know, it's like, you had this area wrong, you had this area wrong, see how far this leg is from this arm, see how the shadows are should be around here, you know, and 
and not over here like you were doing you know because you're used to like drawing with your mind and not with your eye and and when he started doing that and when he started talking about really looking that was when it just clicked in my head i was like oh so that's why life studies are important you know like it never occurred to me how important life studies are up until that point you know i mean i've done life studies then and i was just kind of like oh yeah sure copy yeah what not you know i'm copying something i'm looking at you know and it never really occurred to me like it's not supposed to be just copying it's supposed to be just to be really looking at what you're looking at um and you know being faithful to what you're seeing because that's the thing with reality is that you know even though we get used to a certain look with reality the the fact of the matter is you know there's so much variation in reality that we don't realize it or we don't recognize it you know again going back to the highlight on the nose and i was mentioning about it looks natural on him it looks like it could happen in real life it does happen in real life but it doesn't happen often you know um but it does happen and that's the reason why it's important to do study and to train your eye to like really look at something because you know if you're not really looking at something you would essentially miss that detail so yeah but anyways that's a long winded conversation about studying and the importance of studying and how you should do it and how to be truthful to what you're seeing and not what you think you're seeing you know um try not to you know get so stuck into drawing something based on your style or something you know a lot of artists are very heavily dependent on their style like this is their style this is what they want to do um and i'm like sure that's great that's awesome that you have your own style but every now and then do you open that you know sketchbook and get out of your comfort zone you know go out in the real world look at something and faithfully try to recreate it um that's the best way of studying and then obviously if you can't go out for whatever reason or another if you can't do a life study outside then do the next best thing you know grab at a photo look at a photo or even better look at paintings by old artists which is what i do um a lot of people do studies uh on photos you know some instagram popular instagram person just posted her latest photo or something and you know some artists would go grab that photo and do a study that photo it's fine and great and those are awesome actually you know um but for me i really started doing older paintings you know um i like studying them more than photographs uh, In fact, I don't even remember the last time I studied photographs um, just for a study. I mean, I might have used a photograph to study for a painting that I'm working on, but for an independent study such as this one, I don't remember the last time I did a photo. So yeah. But anyways, this painting is about done. Um, like I mentioned, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. I wanted to do the speed paint, so I wanted to essentially capture the essence of it as fast as I can, which is what I did. Um, I concentrated mainly on the face because that is the center of attention, and I left a lot of things loose. Uh, the hat, I really wanted to go into super detail on that one, like I wanted to just jump in and detail that some more, but I knew that I was running out of time, and so I was just kind of wanting to wrap it up especially since i haven't um touched the bottom part at all the clothing which ironically enough is what attracted me to this painting in the first place was the clothing you know when i look at the clothing i'm like wow that the way he painted all those details was just so awesome like i can't get over it and <laughs> instead of studying that part i got stuck on studying in the face so yeah But, you know you win some you lose some i can always just go back to this painting and pursue it some more start another study if i have the time so yeah which reminds me i i need to finish the study that i'm working on right now that i've been neglecting so yeah that's another story for another day so
thank you so much guys for watching this with me. I will catch you guys in the next show. Good night.